tight edge and five inches in reach. Larry Merchants. Darrell Tyson, in case you don't know him, was a particularly good fighter once upon a time. We'll see what he brings to the to the party tonight. Here you can see why De La Hoya has been so successful. He throws an awful lot of power shots and lands a very high percentage. And these are the jab numbers. You can see that De La Hoya is all over the place. Tyson does throw a lot of jabs. He is a very good boxer when he wants to be. Rules of the bout with unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. The Oscar De La Hoya, Darrell Tyson fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no title involved. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and he can be saved by the bell only in the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold, and now we're ready to welcome Darrell Tyson into the ring. Veteran from Washington, D.C. He's been in against a lot of good fighters. Rafael Ruelas, just to name one of them. Freddie Pendleton, Roger Mayweather. A variety of the best punchers and fighters in the 135 and 140 pound divisions over the years. He comes in with a total of 56 prize fights already in his background. He says to us in a meeting yesterday, I have a large family. I'm the primary breadwinner. I have a chance to accept a paycheck like this. It is my professional responsibility to do it. One of two Tysons in the house. The other one may be a little better known. He's at ringside. Yeah, most fight fans probably never dreamed they'd get a chance to see De La Hoya Tyson. <laughs> Neither did I, Jim. <laughs> and here's the record for the lesser known of the two Tysons in the house tonight. Darrell Tyson, 47 wins, 8 losses, 1 draw. The 24 KOs tell us he once had some punching power. It hasn't been evident in his recent fights. There's the other Tyson, seated uh, in ringside, front row. George, you uh, were nice enough to go over and say hello to Mike. Yeah, wonderful guy, it would seem. You, uh, you haven't spent a lot of time around Mike? No, you don't get a chance to see who live on different, different parts of the country, but he's got an interesting house in Las Vegas. There's Oscar. Oscar De La Hoya, and as Larry mentioned, he moves up to 140 pounds for the first time tonight. You can even see it in his face, Jim. He just looks better. He looks like he's really growing into his body. This is a more natural weight for him. I think he was keeping himself at an artificially low weight for too long. Uh, his trainer, about uh, Alcazar, told me yesterday that he thinks that within a year and a half, perhaps a year, after the scheduled fight with Chavez, he will be a full-fledged welterweight. Crowd responds to De La Hoya. The record, 20 wins, no losses, no draws, 18 KOs. In recent fights against strong professional fighters, Jesse James Leja, Gennaro Hernandez, Rafael Ruelas, he has simply blown them away with punching power. And more than that, he made two really good fighters, his last two opponents, quit. Uh, he's just too strong in the lower lightweight divisions. We'll see how his punch affects his opponents as he moves into the welterweight class. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and Don King Productions in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present a double rumble of professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. James May, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Luther Mack, and Crispin Rivera. Executive Director Mark Ratner. Three physicians at ringside are Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Al Capana, and Dr. Margaret Goodman. The timekeepers at the bell and counting the knockdown seconds will be Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. 
the three judges scoring this first bout on a 10-point bus system will be Carol Castellano, Chuck Jampa, and Art Lurie. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Mitch Halpern. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made for the first of two times tonight, here at Caesars Palace, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white and weighing in at 139 pounds. He comes to us from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., with a professional record of 47 victories, with eight defeats and one draw. 24 of those 47 victories are by knockout victory. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Daryl Terrible T. Teresa. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing brown, trimmed with white, and weighing in at an even 140 pounds. In 1992, he captured Olympic gold and now has a professional record, a perfect one, of 20 and 0, 18 by KO. He has captured three world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the three-time world champion, the pride of East LA, the Golden Boy. De la Hoya. Come on. <coughs> come on out, come out. Eat I've already got the instructions to dress you. I expect the big queen fight to obey my commands at all times. Any questions? I right, touch gloves, come on, touch them. In his brief tenure as a professional, De La Hoya has already been in this position, uh, Jim and George, of taking a fight in anticipation of another fight. That's when he fought John John Molina, uh, waiting to fight Rafael Ruelas. So this is nothing new for him, uh, so, but, and so, but you still wonder how he's going to perform in these circumstances. sense that the crowd is waiting for the fight to bring some excitement. There's a palpable expectation here that this evening is about De La Hoya and Chavez and not their opponents. Let's see if Tyson can take advantage of that in any way. Tyson's fight plan, George Foreman, was to try to jab his way in and then get to De La Hoya's body. He believes that if he stays out away from Oscar at this range, he'll be in trouble because he won't be able to reach him and he'll get hit hard. Yeah, those uh, guys from the nation capital, they do a lot of thinking. You've had some upsets from fighters from Washington, D.C. before come in and upset main event fighters, uh, so Oscar has to be careful. What frightens me about Oscar, he's had so many knockouts lately, Sometimes you forget how to win boxing matches. You gotta go out there and put some points on the table. We haven't seen that from Oscar lately. He gets knockouts. Delahoya with the first left hook of the fight. Tyson blocked it with his right glove, but every Delahoya opponent must wait in some fear and trembling to feel what that first left hook is going to bring. But generally, another fighter, when you're not sure of your power, you want to establish to the opponent that you have power. Oscar doesn't have to do that. He's got to do the opposite. Establish that if you want to take this fight into the 12th round, 10th round, 12th, I still am ahead of point. I'm ahead of, on points. Yeah, this is, this is what Oscar has to do in these fights. Oscar focusing his gaze on the middle of Tyson's ribcage thinking body and then he comes up from there tyson trying to establish the jab hasn't yet managed to get inside and break de La Hoya's body as he claimed he would oscar probably is trying to establish to the crowd hey 
Not only can I knock you out, but I'm a little patient here, too. Been a little patient. We like to see them build up some points because there are some fighters you're not going to be able to knock out, and it's going to go to the judges. The ringside microphones pick up the thudding of Delahoya's body punches. Sounds like heavyweights are hitting. Delahoya conceding to us yesterday in our discussion that he got a little impatient against Jesse James Leha. The crowd at Madison Square Garden got him excited and he went into a bit of a frenzy trying to finish that one at the end of the second round. Didn't damage him, but he says, well, I don't want to do that again. I want to be more measured. When they speak Spanish in Oscar De La Hoya's corner, our interpreter will be Hector Garcia. Relaja. 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 It's only a matter of time. Keep working the way you're doing right now. Don't, don't throw that jab so loose. Tie him up a little bit. Tie him up. First, the jab first and keep him on the outside. And then throw that right hand over the top. That's the whole thing right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you get loose, get close to him. Now pull to him. Pull to him. Okay? You want to pull to him. Yeah, you, you're you only in there with punch. All right. Have a feel. Oh, I just look tight, but I'm on. Just just looking at those George. numbers I makes me wince. Okay, George, I have a cosmic question to ask you. Have you ever seen a prize fighter wear brown trunks before? I no. can't remember. No. <laughs> He's breaking new ground sartorially. <laughs> brown is such a, uh, it's an earthy tone. But it doesn't suggest any anything to me. It doesn't suggest purity. It doesn't suggest uh, anger, fear. It's just brown. <laughs> We're early, and uh, we've verged pretty far afield already, Larry. We have Bill blessed brown. Tyson now trying to fight at closer quarters. In the first round, Tyson threw, threw 22 punches. They were all jabs. And he landed only three of them. Delahoya completely dominating the round. Now what Tyson has to be experiencing, like those guys in Desert Storm, they heard those bombs and they said, they'll stop in a minute, they'll stop in a minute, and they never did. After you just can't take it anymore and you just say, I'm just going to sit on my stool or give up. You just can't close yourself up and just pound, and listen to that pounding around your head. Interestingly, when, when De La Hoya doubles and triples up to the body, as he frequently does, George, he's leaving himself open, but most opponents find it difficult to punch back. Now, we have the first right-hand lead. This guy from D.C., Tyson, is very sneaky. Oscar's got to stick to his plan. Don't pace yourself with him. Keep throwing those bombs. Well, let's see if Tyson keeps going with the right-hand lead. The new strategy employed here in the second round. Tyson with a little counter right inside. De La Hoya lands two left hands in return. Oscar pounding to the body. And Tyson stands firm. Who what a left hook to the body by Oscar De La Hoya. Sensational. I can't recall De La Hoya being so effective to the body before. This is something new. Tyson hurt there by De La Hoya's left hook. De La Hoya bombs him into the rope, and Darrell comes back. He's in good shape. He stays in shape all the time, but Oscar De La Hoya's punching power is another story for most of the men who face him. And now Tyson beginning to cringe as De La Hoya goes to the ribs. And that was from the body blows. Four, five, six, seven, What can eight, Oscar De La Hoya nine, do? Six. A second round knockout. Forged with body blows, George. Oscar, he leaves no questions unanswered for me. <laughs> this guy's got the whole package. The golden touch. <laughs> now, you know, if you, fingers. if you went to school on him to prepare for him, if you're Tyson, that's not one of the things you were prepared for. I mean, he must have landed 20 or 25 good, hard body shots within two rounds. Well, and George, you pointed out that 
left hook underneath the rib cage that he landed over here close to us about 30 seconds before the end. That was really the decisive blow, wasn't no it? No doubt about it. That left hook was, had done its business long before that other knockdown punch came about. De La Hoya is the golden boy. He's got it all. So here's another second round knockout for De La Hoya to go with the second round knockout of Leha in New York to go with the sixth round TKO of Gennaro Hernandez last August, to go with the second round knockout of Rafael Ruelas in May. He is on a roll, and it's going to be Chavez next if Julio Cesar can win later this evening. And this will only build the expectation for that one, George. Yeah, it was frightening because I never you never think a guy could punch so much, throw so many hard punches, and still has, have a ribbon Rhythm, <laughs> rhythm as the fight go on like that. This guy is, he's unbelievable. All right, now let's take a look from earlier in the round, and that was the left hook that damaged him so badly. Yeah, because he hit him underneath with the left hook, the guy thought he would never come back into the head with that kind of power, but he got him with a double left hook. And the right hand to the, to the rib cage there. And when you land, you're hurting the body. You keep thinking, I'm going to get up in a minute. I'm going to get up in a minute as soon as this stop hurting. But it never seems to stop hurting and you can't get up. So if the question was, does Oscar's 135-pound punching power go up to 140, the returns on that subject are pretty resounding. This guy can put on any amount of poundage that he wants and he can still punch. Well, I think he's basically a 147-pounder, George. I, I, I have a, a sort of book on De La Hoya, which is that we may not know exactly how great a fighter this guy is till he goes to 147 which is where I think he will first experience fair fights from the standpoint of punching power. Right now, let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mitch Halpern reaches the count of 10. The bout ends at two minutes, 38 seconds of round number two. The winner by knockout victory, his record now 21 and 0, 19 KOs, the pride of East LA. The undefeated three-time world champion, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Punch that numbers will demonstrate De La Hoya's overwhelming dominance of the two rounds. He threw exactly twice as many punches, landed more than half of them, and among those 57, probably 15 or 20 were brutal body shots, most with the left hook. And let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. All right, Oscar, congratulations uh, once again. Was it planned for you to go to the body, or did that just materialize during the fight? Actually, I saw that he was keeping his guard up very well. It was very difficult for myself to throw those right hands and left hooks. So my intentions were to focus more on the body, try to wear him down. I thought the fight would last maybe six, seven, eight more rounds. But um, I felt I hit him to the body and I caught him with a, a good, clean left hook. Refresh my mind. I don't remember your going to the body that hard, that often. And certainly I don't remember you ending fights that way. Is that true or not? You know, it, it never did happen, but something something that uh, I'm learning, I'm learning more about boxing, I'm studying more videotapes, I'm, uh, I'm learning more about the, the, the past champions, how they were, and I'm trying to pick up little things so I can become a complete fighter. All right, we want to roll that on tape, and we want to show you how you look in taking him apart. We understand that Tyson has said he's never been hit so hard. He's a quality opponent. A lot of people thought you were crazy to take him for a tune-up. Describe what you see. Well, here I feinted him with a left, a left jab, and I was trying to go to the body. Before that left jab, I hit him with a good body shot, which he felt very much. But um, my intentions were to feign him a lot, to try, to try to keep him off balance, and then go to the body. In any way, are you, were you trying or thinking about sending a message to Julio Cesar Chavez, who is renowned as a body puncher? No, not at all. I mean, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, great champion, great person. I was fighting my own fight. I was proving to Daryl Tyson. I was proving to the people that I was training for Daryl Tyson, staying focused for Daryl Tyson. And now that I won and beat Daryl Tyson, I can now focus on Chavez. 
is it conceivable that you and he are gonna test each other down here before you test each other up there? Well, you know that Chavez fight, June 7th, um, if everything goes well for Chavez, we get it on June 7th and um, it's gonna be a very interesting fight because it, it's gonna be a clash of two warriors going at it. You might see a quick knockout, who knows? Um, th that fight is like that, made for a knockout. Are you saying that you feel you're going to have something to prove against Chavez and you're not going to use the boxing ability we've seen you use recently? No, one thing about me is I can adjust to styles and uh, whatever Chavez tries to do, I'm going to try to adjust to that style. June 7th, I'll be very ready for that fight like no other fight and hopefully everything will go well. You list him as one of your idols. Has it hit you yet that you're really close to fighting him and what does it mean to you? Well, I knew it all along that maybe one day we can go at it, Julio Cesar Chavez and myself. I, I've always dreamt about that fight and now my dream is going to become true, fighting the legend, fighting the great champion, fighting the people's idol, and I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, and so is everybody else. Back to you, Jim. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Larry. And uh, George Foreman, a week ago, I stood with Roy Jones Jr., who happens to be one of Bella Hoya's biggest admirers, but he suggested, he said, gee, I don't know, Oscar's taking a tough fight as he gets ready for the Chavez fight. I'm not sure it's such a great idea something bad could happen. Now, De La Hoya has gotten past this and in such a way that it can only build his confidence going into the next one, right? That's true. And you only had the Muhammad Ali of years past who would go in just before a great boxing match or a trying match, fight another tough guy. Oscar De La Hoya, I don't know what tree this guy is from.